if we have any question, we do not have to wait till the end of um, the discussion before we put forth our questions. We can put those on the chat so we don't forget. And so as soon as we are done with um, the discussion for the day, we would um, take those questions and um, we can round up endlessly. So thank you very much, everyone, once again. Over to you, Ibrahim. <clears throat> All right, thank you so much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here once again to continue from where we stopped. And um, I want to thank the organizers and also uh, those of us are on this call right now. Yes, um, to not, not to, you know, to talk too much, um, I would want to say for those who are just joining on for the first time, uh, it's an opportunity to upskill, it's an opportunity to also, you know, learn new technologies. Yes, I understand that some of us are into one um, uh, one feed or the other, you know, you're in telecoms, you're in, um, you know, you're in agriculture or whatsoever. The essence of the power platform is for you to be able to build simple to complex applications, you know, within within your organization, you know, to, so that it solves your problem. And the power platform actually has um, different um, applications that sit on it. We have the power BI, we have the power apps, we have the power automate, and we have the power, power virtual agent. And uh, within the community, we have people who specialize in one or two of these um, fields. So, yeah, feel free to whenever whichever one you you want to actually specialize. I'm sure you always get resources to assist you. But yes, but as far as this call is concerned, what we are focusing right now is the power apps and the power automate. And um, in the first class, we actually started with building a leave request application. Yeah, we built the the interface where a user is able to you know submit a leave request, right? Um, then we also did the part where, yes, you can see all of the requests that you, you've submitted. And today we're just going to go ahead to also, you know, look at our application and see what are the things that we need to do to make it, yeah, um, to make it very useful for the users. So, because as a developer, it's important that you put the user in mind. And then um, if you look at this leave request as it were, you agree with me that yes, it works, right? But there are some things that are still missing. And number one is that all of these fields are not compulsory, right? <clears throat> now, if you be an application where you need data to be to be filled in, and um, eventually it's not, you agree with me that the person the person would submit an incomplete data, and um, an incomplete data would not make sense at the end of the day. So, but then you as a developer needs to you know put in place checks to ensure that yes. Um, the user does not, you know, you know, fills this, uh, fills the form com correctly and completely before he or she is able to submit. So we'll start by, you know, making our fields compulsory today. This is this is the form that we have built. Okay, we can also see some of the other screens that we have built. You right, the success screen and the, the screen that shows all pending requests. But what we want to do firstly is to ensure that these fields are are, are you know, they are compulsory. Now let me try to submit and let's see what happens. Now you will see that I, I didn't I didn't populate anything in those fields and I was able to submit. But if you now look at your data source, you would see that the data your what was submitted does not make sense, which you would see here, right? Ibrahim Ido, and you see that every other field is blank, okay? Right? So which does not make sense. So it's important that you know we cater for for this scenario as a developer. So what we need to do. To make this compulsory, it's simple. What I just need to do is to click the card here, the start date card, okay? Then I'll go to the property drop down, which is and where I would see all properties that pertain to this particular card, okay? Then I'll see required. Now, when I select required, equal to false, it means that it is not required. So I need to change this to be true. But you would see that this is not editable. How do I edit it? I need to unlock this first. So I'll go to advance, right? Then I'll go to unlock to change properties. So once I unlock it, then I can type true there. So the moment I type true here, you would see there's a star that comes up here, right? Which shows compulsory. So I'll change it to red. Of course, like we are all used to, compulsory fields are usually denoted by this red star. So I'll do that. I'll also do same for all other fields, right? Required, unlock, and go to true. True. I'll also do same for this uh, required. Two. Supervisor unlock required. True. Purpose. We also want to know the purpose, so I'll change this to 
quite true. Okay, so I need to change those, all this to red. Okay, this is cool. So let's play this and see. So let me submit. So it shows this, okay? So it shows that these fields are composed and you can't submit. One other thing we can also do is to disable this button. If all these requirements are not met, I mean, all the rules around the form are not met, we can actually disable this. And how do we do that? We have to know the name of the form. Our form is what? New LR form, okay? So I'll go to my submit button, then I'll go to, um, okay, I'll go to the display mode. Now in the display mode, you will see that default is display mode.edit. There are different display mode types. We have edit, we have view and we have disabled. Now edit allows you to click the button. View, yes, view makes it like you can click it, but you can actually click it, you know, just like read only. Why disabled actually grays out the, the button. So what we're doing now, we're saying that if, what's the name of our form, new LR form, recall that I said earlier that you need to always rename your form appropriately. So imagine that you have like 10 forms. So how do you easily identify those forms? It's important that you, re you rename your form so that you can easily identify. So if new form dot valid, right? I mean, the, the rules around the form is valid, then um, it should be display mode dot edit. Okay, else display mode dot disabled. Then I'll, I'll close this. Now let me play so that we'll see. You see that this button is grayed out, right? It's because of the rule that we did. Now we, let's fill let's fill all of this. Let's fill all these fields. Leaf type, right? Supervise for. Let me say test user. Then the purpose. Now you will see the button is now the button is now uh, in a DIT mode. Okay, so that's how it works. It's as simple, it's as simple as that. So we can go ahead to submit. Okay, now when I submitted, it just took me to this. This was successfully completed, and it doesn't navigate away from here. So how do we take care of that? Now you can two things. Is either you put in, you put a button here or an icon that takes you back. Yeah, I can say okay. Let me go to an icon. Uh, let me add an icon here. Uh, let me just add an icon. So I will change this icon from what it is to something we can easily identify. Let me go to back. I can actually do a back or home icon. So let me do home icon for instance. Okay. Um, so on the click of this icon or select of this icon, what should happen? So there's a function called navigate, okay, which we can easily really, really, uh, relate with. Navigate to where? I want it to take me back to the welcome screen when I when I click on it, okay? So, but let me let me patch this so that it's small, it looks smaller. Okay, now once I click on this, I can go back, right? It takes me back here, okay? Now I'll do a new request. I fill the form, okay? I can go back to my supervisor login. Now the supervisor login, it's where the supervisor comes to to see all pending requests, right? Now, I haven't done this. Let's go back to the form to see. Is there another thing we need to do here? Right? Is there any other thing? Yes. So one thing that we're supposed to do that we haven't done is that as, as an employee, you are entitled to days of leave. Number one, maybe you have your normal, your normal leave days to be 15 days, 21 as the case may be. You could also have um, sick leave to be five days. You could also have paid time off to be five days. You know, so you could also have maternity leave. So all of these leave days, you need to be able to, you know, factor them. And at every point that this person wants to request for a leave, you need to also look at the balance that he or she has, right? To be able to determine if the person is still, you know, is still valid for a leave. So how do we undo this part? So that brings us to the idea of creating another list. Now, within this list, what we're going to do is to manage uh, the staff leave days within this list. So let's go ahead to create that list. So I'll go to, I'll go back to my list and I'll, um, 
let me do a new list here. So I'm sure it's I'm sure it's not this. Let me go back to list. So I'll click on new list. OK, I'll say blank list. So what name do we give it? You have to give it a name that you can easily relate it. So let me say staff or employee leave details. OK. So employee leave details. So if you need to put a description, you can do that. And if you don't, need, if you don't, it's not necessary. So you just create it. So whenever you create a list by, by default, OK, there's a, there's a title columns that comes with it, right? So we're going to leave that. So we go ahead to add columns to this, just like you know, in any normal table, be it in Microsoft Word or Excel. You know, when you have anything that has to do with table, you'll be talking about rows and columns. Now you need to you need to create a column here or a field. So the first column column that we need is the staff name. So obviously that's go that's going to be a person a person column. So we will call it staff name, or we will call it employee. Let's just say employee. Okay. So I'll I'll save this. I also add so which what which other one do we need to? Okay, let's add single line of text. So what do we want to add? Let's say annual leave. Okay, no, let's let's take a cue from here. The leave time. So we have sick leave, vacation, and paternity. So it has to be these three. So we'll call it total, total sick leave. Now this total sick leave, what it means is that the total number of sick leave that this person has. So I'll save this. Second one that we're going to create is uh, sick balance or let's say used sick leave. So we'll save this too. Okay, so the next one that we do is um now we're supposed to have a balance sick leave, but I'll just I'll just hold on, on that. So the, the next one is um let's check here vacation and paternity okay so let's say total vacation save the next one is total um no used vacation okay so I'll save this And um, the next one is um, total paternity. Sorry to delay this. We are just doing this is just for demo purposes. You can add paternity to your own because I know some ladies can be. You start saying uh, gender equality, so but that's not the. <laughs> you can actually add to yours, okay? So the next one is um, used paternity. So we'll save this. OK, so I, I think we can stop at this point, right? OK, this title, we need to do something on this title because it's actually a compulsory field. So I'll just make it not compulsory now, OK? So this is it. So I'll click on the title and um, yeah, I'll make it not compulsory. OK, so I haven't done this. Let's go back to now we need to create. We need to create this record. Let's add a record here. I'll go to new. Um, then I'll okay. I can leave title to employee name. Let me put my name. Okay. So sick leave. So sick leave that I have is five. I've not used any. My vacation is 21 days. Okay. I haven't used any. The paternity is five. So let's call it. So let's save this. Okay. I can also add another user. Let me say Chris. Or let me say test user. Test user one. OK, total sick leave three, total vacation 15 and total paternity three. So I'll save this. OK, so we have two users in our organization, you know, so to speak. So we let's go back to our to our application. Now we need to bring that data into this environment. How do we do that? There's a cylinder on the left here, which is the data. Okay, so I'll go to add data. Um, 
Then I'll search. Let me see list. If it isn't found, let me let me copy and paste because uh, it's actually SharePoint. Okay, so SharePoint. So I'll paste use URL. So the, because this is actually a list that is sitting outside, uh, it's not within a particular uh, SharePoint site, so to speak. I think it's sitting within my own personal space. I mean, the, city, the list is sitting in my space. So that's why you, you might not be able to just pick any, any address as it were, but just copy and paste the URL. Now you see all of the list that exists within this space, right? Then you click on the particular one that you need, which is employee leave details. So I connect to it. So just watch the left hand. So on this space, on the left hand side here, you would see the two lists that we have. Why this is our list, list request, the, the list that manages our request. This is the one that we use to manage the employee leave details. Now I haven't done that. So what we'll do next is to be able to show the leave details that this, this particular user has, okay? So what we can do is to say, now let me adjust um is it i adjust this right let me adjust this so that the space at the top okay so i want to be able to display the live details of the part of this person that is that is called that is logged in okay this user now this there's a way we can capture the current user the person who is actually filling this form there's a way we can capture it there's a so which he has a function called user dot um the email or the or the phone name but we'll get to see that as we continue so i'll just insert um i will insert um a gallery here okay let me insert a gallery so i'll go to gallery like i said earlier a gallery is actually used to display um data it's actually used to pull data so i'll click on so when i insert this gallery i'll select i'll select my leave details right so this is actually very big let me rename my gallery to say gal um, employee leave details it's always necessary that we rename okay so once i select my gallery let me select it i'll make it i'll adjust it to the size of that environment okay i don't need this image so i think i should just delete it okay um okay let me okay so let me click on this pencil so that i can adjust the height of this template cell here okay so let me click on the gallery again and um I just want to be so I can draw it across here. Let me try. Let me bring this down a bit. So how do I bring this down a bit? I look at the Y coordinate and do this. Okay, it's, let me do 70. Okay, nice. There's an error showing up here. Why? Let's check why. Okay, because it's actually referencing the image. So I'll, I'll just delete everything there. Okay. So within our gallery, it has actually picked my name. It has picked the okay. It has picked the two users within the within here. So what I would do is this name that I picked. I don't want it to show the name. I want to see the total. I want to see the total number of leave that. Okay. I want to see the total vacation here. Okay. This one is show, okay. Um. So I let me reduce the size of this. The width of this. Let me put it as um. Let me say fifty. I just make it 50. Okay. I'll do I'll do control C and control V so that I duplicate it. Okay. So this one, why this one is total vacation. This one would be used, used vacation. Okay, which is which is null. Then I can I also duplicate it. So why this one will now be um okay. Let me just leave it at this two. I'll just leave it at this two. But above this place, I want to be able to add a text. I want to add a text above here. Okay, so this text will be this text will be total vacation. Okay, we've done it a second. Let me try to okay. So I have a total vacation here. Um let me let me reduce the size a bit so that it will accommodate enough. So let me take this to 120. 
OK, I think that's let me do one thirty. OK, that's fine. Let me duplicate. I'll, I'll duplicate it and um, here I would have. Um, used vacation. OK, I have used vacation. I haven't done that. You would see that um, it's actually showing two records. I mean, for the two people, Ibrahim and test user. So I wanted to just show for Ibrahim. OK, so how do I do that? If you look at the gallery, there's a property of it called items. The items mean that what do you want to display in the gallery? And you see that is equal to what? Employee leave details. So here is actually showing all the employee leave details. But now we need to filter it so that it will show for only, for only the current user. So how do we do that? We need to introduce a filter. OK, filter the employee leave details. Where, where what? Um, there's a column called staff. OK, or let's confirm that. OK, employee, there's a column called employee. So we want to filter based on this employee. So I would say where employee. OK, because it's actually an object, object in the sense that the employee has so many things are embedded in, in, in it. We have email address there. We have the person's picture. We have the person's full name. You know, it's an object. You have so many things on that. So it means that I will have to look for the person's email, which is this. Sorry, I think somebody is trying to. OK. Now, which is email? So I'll say where the employee email is what current user, which is user, which is a function called email dot email. Okay. So this is what I, this is the filtering that I will do, right? So it says that filter this gallery, uh, filter the filter this list. Okay, where the employee email is equal to what the current user, which is user dot email. So let's preview this and see. Wow. So it's not showing anything. Okay. It's not showing anything. Um, yes, and there's a reason for that. Who wants to? Who has an idea? I, I want to ask. Who has an idea why it's not showing anything? Hello. Okay, let me just go ahead. So the reason why, and this is actually a huge problem. Hey. If you don't know about this, you might be lost for some days if you know trying to figure out why this is not working. And the reason is because someone is trying to join. And the reason is clear. The reason is because this e this user dot email, you know, let's let's do something. I'll, I'll copy it and insert a label somewhere. And this is a, this is one way to troubleshoot your your solution. Should you have any? Okay. So now let me uh, let me paste this here. You will see the email address that is here. So obviously you can see is Ibrahim at snappoint.com. Okay. But uh this employee.email is not seeing it like that. Uh I don't know. Let me see. How do I make it? I, I want us to see. Let me see what I can do. Okay, this is what I will do. I'll just do a clear collect sharply so that we can see. Um, oh no, okay. Let me insert another label. I'll do a lookup. Let me insert a label, right? So I'll do a lookup. Mm, oh, let me see. Okay, the employee leave details, right? Um, so what do I want? How do I do this? Okay, where the employee dot email. I just want to I want to show us the reason why that didn't populate. Is there any other thing here? No, nothing. Okay. Sorry. Oh no. Okay. Uh, Let me sorry. do can we use a gallery to just see everything in the yeah, I can actually do a gallery, but I just felt this might be easier. But let me do let me try this. If this doesn't work, then we can. Let me do first dot employee. Let me see dot the email. Okay, cool. Yeah, so this works, right? Now look look at the two email addresses. Look at the two email addresses. Are they the same? No. So this has 
dot on microsoft.com why this does not have so that is why this will never show right this will never work and you know many people have fallen into the um, same so how do we remedy this we remedy this so one thing that we can do we can go back to our connector and look for an office 365 connector so let's search for office 365 connector users connector okay no let, let me do it this way let me search office 365 here now this is it office 365 users connector right so i'll click on it and add it now i haven't done this let me insert another label okay so i'll put that label down here now i want to get this person so i'll go i'll do office 365 users um just um my profile yeah my profile version 2 and i'll do um let me see let's get it. let's look for the email okay mail okay cool so if i prevail now you see that this and this are the same so it means that I can actually equate these two. Now, this is actually called, this is actually the user principal name. It is the, uh, it's, it depends on how your account was created, you know, at the point of, you know, uh, initiating or uh, creating this account. So, yes, we've had situations where this is really a big, this really puts in a big mess and you just be wondering why, why it isn't working. So, what we need to do is by comparing these two, okay? So let's go back to our gallery instead of this user that this. So we're going to compare this. So let's preview and see. OK, yeah, voila. And this is showing. OK, so you see it's showing now. Total vacation is 21 used. It's showing now. Well, I think what we should have done is all this use should have been zero by default. OK, since I haven't used anything, I, I can say zero, zero, zero 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 okay so i can exit this so let me go back to refresh my data source uh okay so let me refresh i think it's still refreshing still refreshing okay showing now it's showing now so i think we can go ahead now okay now let me i want to give this a border so that it's it shows it shows fine other one okay so we can delete this this uh these labels so this is one of one way to uh, to troubleshoot you just you know you bring labels and you try to you know put your various variables everywhere to see how everything is so we can bring a variable here I can, we can also give okay now we can make this small we don't need to be doesn't need to be this big so what i would do is to align I align these two so what's the y coordinate of this 57 i also make the y coordinate of this 57 so that they are, they are in line then i'll put let me check this this what's the y coordinate of this zero this is also zero but let me make it 10. i also make this 10. okay yeah so this can go to the middle a bit why this this goes here okay cool so let's bold in this let's bold in this bold or semi bold um and this this should actually be big this leave days let's give it 20 24 and um let's bold in it this we can increase the width to like um 138 okay it didn't adjust let me increase it to 140 okay cool so let's bold in this too I'm bolding this guy to 28 Holding this, this can also adjust to 140. Yes, 
So this, this person now can see the total vacation as this, okay? Let me see the Y. Is it the same? 57 Y 57. Okay. I think there's this space. We can adjust this. Okay, fine. So I need to also do for the paternity. Um, so let's let's we can duplicate this gallery. Let's duplicate this gallery, okay? So we can copy it and paste here. So we copy and paste. Yeah, let's put it here. Okay, nice. So we just need to change the details inside this place, right? So what is this filtering by? So where, so this one now, instead of this total vacation, we're looking at total, total sick leave, okay? And we are going to change this to, so we have total sick leave. This also used sick leave. And this zero two has to change to used sick leave. So we increase this, we increase the, the width of uh, this one to 150. This also 150. Okay, that's for sick leave. So we can, let's duplicate now. I need to, I, I have to rename this, this, these things, but I, I'll do that. So let me paste this. Mm, so we take this one. With this gallery, I have to drag it down here. Okay, so this one will now be, this 21 will be total paternity. Okay, I'll copy this. used paternity okay and this zero will be what used paternity so we are good to go you can decide to give them different background color so let me rename this gallery this one is uh paternity this one is um leave sick sick leave okay why this one is um this one is vacation now right okay so good we can decide to give them background color if you so which we can say uh, let's check this um does he have a few we can give it a few what color how do we give them okay let's let's go here we can we can check for the few here Mm, how do you let me see it actually has a feel of white but i don't want that let me see yellow wow no 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 no. this wrong i apparently selected the wrong thing i wanted to select this the old gallery let me see yellow All right, you can have something like this just to differentiate, you know. You you can you can actually take care of that. That's not that's not an issue. Okay. Now, um I think one thing again is missing here. We're supposed to have um, the number of days calculated. Okay. So if I'm choosing start date and end date, there should be a num number of days, so which we didn't figure. Okay. But one thing that we can do is to look at the difference between the start date and the end date. So how do we do that? Now, um, would say on change of this, right? So what we want to do now is to say, okay, you have chosen a start date and you have chosen an end date. So we should be able to calculate the date difference, okay? So how do we do that? Let's insert a label, you know, let's bring down a label somewhere here. So we want to calculate the date difference. So what we'll do is there's a function called date diff. We we'll say date date diff. Okay. So the first the start date is what the end date. So let's look at it. You have to call copy the name of the control here, which is date data card value four. Okay. So I'll go I'll go back here. Then I will do I'll paste here. Dot what selected date. Okay, comma. So I'll go back to look for the name of this date too. 
which is DACA card value three. I'll go back here, then um, this dot selected it. Then comma, how do we want to calculate? Is it in days or hours or milliseconds? What we need is what? Is this. So we'll do this and we'll close this. Now let's preview it. Let's select, um, let's say Monday. Monday is 15th, okay. Okay, then Friday, then um, 19th, okay. So this is minus four. So that means that the order needs to be reversed. So what it means is that he has to, then this this should this should this should come first. So we'll change this four to three, and this three will be four. Okay, so let's preview. So this person is actually going on four days leave. But then is that actually correct? I think it should be five days. What? Well, right? Not correct. Because if you are going on Monday, you're starting on Monday, then that should be five days. Right, so how do we remedy that? Right? The calculation is wrong, so it should be start date inclusive. So we need to remedy. Okay. We need to Sorry, remedy I want to this. say you are going on Monday, is different from if you are going from Monday. Okay, so okay, yeah. I, I so is is the assumption that um, are you saying we should it should be Friday to Friday then? No, Monday to Friday, so it should be okay. Monday to Friday, so we're saying so we're saying that that should be five days. That that should be five days now, right? Yes, yes, sure. But you know, if if we say on Monday, it might mean that maybe at close of business on Monday. Yes. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I see. So it's I going see. to start from Tuesday like that. If we on Monday. Okay. So how do we remedy this? So what what do we do then? Do we now say, yeah, you are starting on Friday and um, you are ending on Friday, or you know? No, I think what you said. What you said, the Monday to Friday is better. Is better. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I think that's 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 by the way we can we can always we can always fix that. But what the what we want to do, achieve is that. Now you are requesting for this number of days, let's say four days. I'm sure we will remedy that. That's not that's not an issue. So you, you are requesting for four days, so, so to speak. And you have you have 21 days total, and you have you have used zero. That means you still have 21 days left. So yes, it's valid. Okay. So, but how do we how do we do that check? Right? How do we do that check? So what we'll do is to look at the number of days left. Okay, how do we look at the number of days left? We can say, um, okay, let's let's do a calculation here. So for this person, we can actually bring in the number of days left here. So uh, let me see. There's no there's no enough space here, but okay. Let's go back to text um, text property of this. Okay, let me see. Okay, so let's do this. Um, I want to set. Or let me bring in another label. Let me copy and paste the label here. Uh, hello. Yeah, I can hear you. I think what we can do to remedy that we can uh, add the hours there. Let's say the day starts from uh, as in the midnight. That it's going to calculate the entire as in that particular starting day as a as a one one particular day and to give us five. If you add okay. the time, then okay. you understand. Okay. I, I think yeah. I get you. Yeah, we there, 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 are, there are quite a number of things that we can do to actually remedy that. Yeah, but I'm sure we'll, we'll just we'll go with the best best solution uh, maybe in the next class. That's not. But I just want us to complete this part where we want to see the number of days that this person has left and the number of days this person is requesting. Okay. Now, so what we do, we can do, um yeah, so let's do like a lookup, okay? I think we already have the formula here on this gallery, right? So let's go to the items. Let's do this, okay? So on this, we can do filter, okay? Filter this. But because this filter, it returns a, a table, that's why you are seeing this error. So when you want to use filter in this case, just do, is that you introduce a first, 
or a last, okay, a first. Okay, so let's let's have a dot somewhere. So what we want to see is the total vacation. Um, let's see total vacation. Yeah. Okay, so you can see it's showing twenty one now. There are different approaches to this. Okay, there are different approaches. There are different ways you can actually get this. Okay, so let's. This is the total number of days that this person has. Uh, this person has. Number of views is also. We can also get number of views. Now let's do this. So we haven't gotten this. Um, but what I actually need is the number of days that is left. So I need to do a subtraction, obviously between um, the total vacation and the total use. So let's go. So I would say value is actually long, but then I'm sure we'll arrive at the shorter solution. This is actually long, but we'll arrive at the shorter solution. No, something. Okay, yeah, like I said, there are different ways you can actually use to achieve this. Okay, now I would have what I've, I would have actually created another column here that does the calculation. So it just subtracts by default 21 minus zero. So you have a, a column that says no left uh, le, the number of this left. Okay, we can do that. It's also possible. You can also come and do subtraction here, right? You can do a subtraction here just to get the number of this left, which is 21. It's possible. You can also have it. Within, within this gallery, okay? But the most important thing is for you to get um, the number of this left, which is this. So the number of this left, as far as this is concerned, is let me say label, uh, leave vacation remaining. So we can say something like this, okay? So it's 21. Now, if this guy selects this date, I want to be able to check these two, these two and make a comment. So what I would do, I can I can insert a label, just informational, okay? So I'll put I can put a label here, just to compare these two, okay? Let me okay, let me say label dates leave duration. So this is leave duration. This is what this is vacation remaining. So what I would do. On this text, I'll put it. I'll put an instruction on this text to say, "You have passed. You have require more than your more than your leave is left." So this is actually an instruction. I will put it. Let me let me cut it and put it somewhere here. So let me drag this down a bit and I'll make it red. Now, so what we will do is this should only show if this four is greater than 21. So let's do the let's do the conditioning now. So I'll go to this and I'll go to what the diff what do we we use the visible property? We go to visible. So we say if open brackets paste. Now I have to bring in a value here. I have to introduce a value because we're actually talking about numbers and the, that label is actually text. So if this dot text, okay, is greater than, okay, is greater than, what is this number? This one, this one is leave vacation remaining. So I'll go back here. It's greater than value, open bracket, this dot text remaining. Okay, what should happen? It should show it should show else it should be false. Right? So you can see it. So when we preview it, it's not showing, but let's take a, a very far date. So let's say December 31st. So it will show definitely. 
because the number of days is 46, which is greater than 21. So let's choose an earlier date, say like 10th. So look at this. We also need to be able to cater for this because you, this date must not be less than this start date, okay? It must not be less than, and it must not even be equal to. Well, it can actually be equal to here yeah, if you, if you, um, if you want to take just one day time off. But even at that, I think yeah. So this this must not happen. So we need to cater for that. But let's say it's seventeenth, which is two. Yeah, you see that that text is not showing. Let's go back and choose um, fifteen twenty-two of next month. So definitely this this will show up. And um, and lastly is that when this shows up, you also need to be able to control the submit button so that this person is not able to submit. Okay, so that this person is not able to what to submit. So let me this guy. I don't want these labels to show. So what I will just do is to simply hide them by coming to visible. I'll turn this off. I'll come to this and turn this off too. Okay, so like I said, let me copy this rule now so that it will. Okay, okay. Before I do that. Let me choose this long date and submit. Uh, supervisor, let me put test user. Test user one on vacation. So I'll submit. So you see, I was able to submit and it shouldn't happen. That shouldn't be the case, right? It shouldn't be the case. I should not be able to, to submit. So, what it means is that I need to control this my submit button such that whenever um, this uh, whenever that this this text is showing up when this is you know the number of days is exceeded then this button should also be greater. So how do we do it now? We because already we, we have um, a rule that's on this. It means that we need to we need to um, adjust this our rule. And how do we do that? So let me just copy and paste this rule here. So what I will do is I'll put an or I'll make this a compound statement such that I'll say if this is this, so let me copy this and I'll, I'll discard this. I'll introduce an or say if uh, this or this, okay, I'll put a comma here. Then close this, I'll put a comma, okay. So let me format it and see. Is it, is it okay? Okay, it's okay. So what I've done here is to say if my form is valid, or oh, no, 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 no. So it's wrong. I, I'm, what we have done is wrong. But let's test it. I'm sure. I'm sure it's wrong. I'm sure it's wrong. So let's select. Let's say from Monday, okay, to to December thirty first, okay. See, um, let me see. Um, Vacation, supervisor, test user, test user, and okay, purpose, official, or leave. Now you see the, the button is still is still enabled, so I, I that's why I know I know that that is wrong. So let's go back to it. Let's look at it again. We said if the form is valid, edit. If this is greater than so, this is wrong. So we're, we're going to say less. So if the number of duration is less than or equal to this, it should be enabled. Okay. Mm, wait. If this, if the form is valid, edit. If the duration is less than or equal to this, it should also be. So let's check. It's still enabled. So obviously something is still wrong. Okay. Let's go back. So I think this all should have been earned. This all should have been earned. So let's check. So it's grayed out. Okay, it should have been earned. So let's check. Let's bring it back to a, a closer date. So it's enabled, right? So let's go back and see a far date, 30th, is disabled. Okay. So you need to, when you are building your application, it's important that you factor in, you factor in all of these scenarios so that at the end of the day, you don't have a uh um you don't have a you have a, you have a clean data and you also you know you are able to manage users right but this we still have quite a number of things to do here okay one of the things that we also need to do is that we didn't factor in the type of vacation if you were sick leave or this also at the point of submission and the process is approved 
these use vacations to also be up updated you know so these are some of the things that we have not done but of course as we progress into the into the series we'll, we'll talk about that so let me stop here so that um i don't i don't uh, bombard um with too much and i think we have time is fast spent thank you over to the moderator oh wow okay thank you thank you thank you very much um, ibrahim for the wonderful session great insight here um, I want to believe everyone on this call has learned um, so much now. I just really hope that people are not um, thinking that. Um, but he said the uh, power, power platform should be a lot easier than the traditional, you know, application development. Why is the, are things I'm um, looking a bit complex now? It's it's not really that way. Uh, one thing that is sure is that. Uh, Perhaps because we have uh, missed out from some sessions, so we need to refer back to those so that we have um, a better foundation as regards what we are talking about today. People that attended the first two sessions, hopefully will be able to relate better with this. And then we have the recording links on the chat. We can bookmark that on our web pages, um, on our browsers, so we can access those, watch them, and then perhaps we'll get um, a better understanding of this. So uh, we have um, spent quite um, an ample time already, and um, I think we have a question already. So if you have more questions, please, we can drop all our questions on the chat box. And then for those of us that um, we would want to unmute our microphones to ask our questions, we can signify so that we would be allowed to do that. So the first question I have here is from Sharif. Is saying that how do you integrate the app into your organization? That is um the question, Ibrahim. All right, thank you. Um, so yeah, so if if you look at my email address, you would you would see that it's actually um yes, let me see, it's actually an it's actually a business account. Well, so if you if you have a business account, you should uh, like if you have an Office 365 account that belongs to your organization, whatever application you are building, then is already within your the space of your organization because really what you're building is actually um enterprise focus is actually for your for your organization if is for your uh, your company's uh, distance right but the thing is if you are not using your company's address maybe perhaps you have a developer account that microsoft allows you to create for which gives you e5 license for a year if it's that then yeah that means you can that's like a a, uh, a test environment for you or a development environment for you to get your hands dirty and you all you need to now bring the application from that environment to your company's environment is also possible via exporting the app and importing it to that environment but you would see now that the email address i'm using is actually uh like a business account so it means that it's within the business and the application already is within the business uh environment another thing is if i want to also get you that you might be talking about is Maybe after developing the application, you now need a place where people can access it. There are different places you can do. Number one is you can integrate it within Microsoft Teams. Number two is if you have a SharePoint site or like an intranet portal, you can have it as a link within that portal. Okay, so that's also possible. But I hope I hope I'm, I'm, I've been able to answer your question. Um, I hope so too. So thank you for that response there. So if you have um, more questions, please, we can put those on the chat. So we can uh, put our questions on the chat box while I read that out to our facilitator. And if you would like to ask the questions um, verbally, you can signify so that we take those as well. So but in the meantime, let me remind us that um, this is a series and um, today is um, the third which implies that um, next week, um, Saturday, hopefully we would continue on this. Obviously, we would have seen that um, it has not ended. We are not there yet. We are actually building this every week. So from where we stopped now, it's where we're going to continue next week. So I want to plead with us to try as much as possible not to miss any of the series, because that way it will make a lot of sense at the end of um, the whole conversation. So I can see um, a maker and is up. Please, you can go on. Thank you. Thank you, Ibrahim. Thank you, everyone. Uh, my question centers around the uh, uh, level of approval. Uh, as you can see from the uh, presentation and the demo and the uh, what has been done so far, we only have one level of approval. So what are, what are the cases where we have more than one level of approval? 
is going from uh, its supervisors to uh, uh, another level or another person to finally approve the leave. What, what happens in that case for the purpose of newcomers too? Okay, so for multiple level, levels of approval, it's still the same format like we, we have done, just like you'd see. Okay, so we have this this particular um, this dashboard for this supervisor to see all pending requests and likes, you know, and to also view. So it also follows the same pattern. So for instance, if you have like an HOD also, who is also supposed to see um, requests that are pending on him. So what you know, what we need to do is just to have another, a screen, you know, that has all requests that are pending on the on the HOD. Okay, and one other thing that we also need to do is there's also there's also a way to you need to be able to find a way to you know to identify all HODs within the organization. So for instance, if Ibrahim is raising a request, I should have a, a, an HOD, and it should be dynamic because I can't. Um, oh yeah, it, it should be dynamic such that uh, we can actually create another list where we have all HODs, right? That be, um, you know, with different departments such that if I'm in IT, for instance, I just look up for um, the HOD of IT and it automatically picks. Okay, so it has to be so it has to be dynamic. Then, like I said earlier, just create a screen for all approvals that are pending on the HOD, and um, once the HOD clicks on this view. What it just what it does is just to take the person to the leave details and it can approve. So the beauty of this is that you can duplicate the particular screen, right? I can duplicate this for the for the HOD to also approve. So what I just need to do is instead of supervisor approval here to just be HOD approver. So that that works too. It's just uh, it's a similar it's a similar pattern. Thank you. Um. Okay. Thank you, Ibrahim. Mimika, you hand this off again. You want to clarify something? Yes, I want to ask further. So, he, he, duplicating the screen does that mean that uh, uh, the we need to create additional field uh, from SharePoint that caters for that HOD, or just duplicating the screen? Exactly. You ha we have to create additional um, columns, yeah, to cater for the HOD approvals. You are right. All right. Thank you very much, Amy Brian, for the responses so far. Um, I think um, we are actually out of um, our time already. So if we have further questions, we can also keep those against um, the coming session. So of, of course, because of the fact that we would continue this next week. So for questions that we may still have after now, we can always bring those forth while we come in the next session. And we are sure that um, ultimate justice will be done to those questions. And um, most importantly is that as we listen to this please let's endeavor to also lay our hands on them that is where the knowledge would be cemented why we come to sessions like this if we do not um, take our time to practice some of this we may not really get um, as much as we would have envisaged getting from this session so it is um highly important that we try as much as possible to practice while we watch the recordings or even immediately after sessions like this and um, this is um, this would be bring a lot of um, values to the way we do our work and um, some other things around our dispensation so thank you very much um, everybody i can see a number of um, the power platform uh, user group leaders are on the call so i don't know if um, we would want to say a few words david abu are you are you there um, yeah, so I think phone is here. It's phone, yeah. Yeah, phone you should go first, please. Phone. Um, okay, phone. Are you there? Hi, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It's good, good to have you. Just an observer, please. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say a big thank you to everyone for joining the session. Um, and a big thank you to Ibrahim and Idowu and David and Ola for for all the work around organizing it. Um, honestly, I I don't know, a couple of you may know me. I um, I just started like you, joining all of these community sessions and being determined to learn how to use Power Apps. I think this will be going to two years now. It all seems very strange, especially if you don't have any knowledge of development. You know, it seems like a lot sometimes. You may be like, ah, like Ido said, it's low code. Why are we doing so much logic? But the truth is, it's like every, everything new in life. When you're 
just trying to learn how to drive. You have the same experience. And before you know it, you can even drive and talk on the phone and scream at your kids all at the same time and not lose your concentration. So that's how it is. So please don't get um, overwhelmed with all of the logic and the expressions. Um, it will get easier as you continue to use them. And really, none of us are really there. We are all still learning. We all still get stuck sometimes. But the beauty is we have each other to lean on. I've gotten stuck sometimes. And I, I'll just summon David and Ibrahim and um, Tunde and Yola and say, well, yeah, guys, I need to work out this formula and I'm not just getting it right. So it's okay. And that's the power and the purpose of the community. So please stay connected. Um, I'm happy that the, at the turnout today and let's stay true. Try to create your own applications. So if you get stuck, um, reach out on the next call when we start and um, all of us here will be happy to help you. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for, for the words of advice and encouragement. Thanks a lot. Um, so just in two or three minutes, um, David, would you want to say something as well? OK. Thank you, everybody. Uh, so what I would just say is that um, thank you everybody for joining in. Um, this is a series and it's going to take till December before we are done. Um, so what we are preparing for is a Global Power Platform Bootcamp in February. So um, we are taking it a step at a time so that to gather everybody to, to that physical um, bootcamp um, in Lagos for those in Lagos. Um, so I want everybody to be um, to join the community. You have the link I posted it in the chat, um, so that we can receive the emails for every Saturday, five to six p.m. We are done. We just learn new things and we continue to learn. If you need, um, so there are two things. We have the Microsoft 365 plan and the community plan, so that you can test this without you having um, the official 365. So you don't need to work for a company before you can test everything that Ibrahim has done today. So you can take the first session on YouTube, the second session, and this third session, you have the three session and you can use to practice um, on your own. We have the M365 plan and um, also the also the um, community plan that you can register and have a developer account. The developer account will give you access to be able to build um, these um, power apps um, tools that you want to, any solution that that you want to, you'll be able to, you'll be able to build it. Um, so thank you very much to the leadership, everybody for making um, this work. Um, we are going to meet um, next week, Saturday. Um, thank you, Musi. All right. Thank you very much, um, David. And thank you for, for the words of encouragement and the information you have given to us. Um, okay. I don't know if Charles would want to say something as well before we quality day my guys have actually said a lot so maybe i should just mention this that i came into this community just as you are today i can remember the position of my tables and chairs around my windows in the lockdown in 2020 looking forward to the saturday edition and every time being part of it learning from Fuyi, david uh, but in that Conde, you know, and a host of others. Uh, today, I am where I am, being a hearty, you know, contributor in this space because I practice and I learn. And that just right straight again um, for his call that we should ensure that we practice this. You will feel fulfilled. You will feel the joy when you create solutions that address business problems. But you'll be able to experience that joy if you are not practicing and creating the solution. So the word is keep practicing. Thank you very much, Charles. So let's take that home. If that is um, one of the major things that we'll take out of today's session, let's ensure that we engrave that on our walls. Keep practicing. That is the key word there. So it, learnings will not be important, will not be efficient and useful if we do not put it to practice. So let's endeavor to practice as much as we can. Thank you very much, um, everybody. Thanks a lot. We have um, taken um, so much time. Thanks for your sacrifice to have stayed with us till this moment. It's a pleasure having you join us and we appreciate the leaders from um, the community and as well our facilitator who has shared 
and most knowledge with us. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your time, everyone. And um, we hope to see us next week, Saturday, same time, 5 p.m. West African time. Let's be let's try as much as possible to join in and we'll continue from where we're stopping today. Thank you, everyone. And let's stay safe. Let's relax. The weekend is um, wrapping up. Let's relax. Let's take enough water and let's be fine. Hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye for now, everyone.